Welcome. Today we are going to ignore some very easy directions and we are going to disassemble and rebuild a Shimano external bearing bottom bracket, specifically for Holotech 2 cranks, so 24 millimeter crank axle diameter. Uh, this procedure will cover 44 millimeter external diameter cups and the bearing is 37 millimeter external or outer diameter. All right, so why am I disassembling this? Um, honestly, I wouldn't disassemble it if you're going to try to reuse this dust cover. It's pretty easy to damage. Uh, if you replace it with the same quality bearing, probably not worth it. These are cheap. It's easier to just buy a new one. It's not worth the effort. The reason I'm doing this is I wanted a little bit nicer bottom bracket with nicer ceramic bearings. Whether or not I need that is debatable. I probably don't, but I like projects, so here we are. Um, my reasoning is that I could take this off the bike. I know it's going to thread back into the bike. And I could get bearings, seals, dust covers, everything for much cheaper than if I were to just buy a bottom bracket straight up from somebody. So that's what we're doing. Here we go. It's riding season and I didn't want to take my bike out while I waited for parts and, you know, throughout this project. So I did purchase the BBMT501, which is the latest uh, replacement for the standard Shimano bottom bracket. And that's what you're going to see me working on. And then uh, at some point I will take this SMBB52 out of the bike and put that on the shelf and you know, rebuild that. And on the roadside we have the BB-RS501. That's the latest Shimano direct replacement. The bottom bracket that came out of the road bike, its only markings are BC 1.37 by 2.4 road. And then here we have the BBRS 501 already rebuilt. So you can see here, they're a little bit different. There is a gap between the outer race and the wall. On the old uh, bottom bracket, we do not have that. So. If the dust cover that we get fits this, it wouldn't have fit here and I would not have been able to reuse this. So, I mean, it's fine. I wasn't going to anyways. I screwed these notches up really bad trying to get this out. The threads were really seized. I basically had to stand on the end of a two foot breaker bar to get this out, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be reusing this and don't think I'd be able to anyways. You can see some differences here. Obviously to make up for that extra diameter, uh, on the BBRS501, we have a larger diameter dust cover and this little bump out here. And you can see the larger diameter there and there as well. So the diameter for that is... forty millimeters. And... forty four. And for this, it should be 37. And then the bearing, this is the bearing that comes out. It is, it's the same for both. 37. Twenty-five. And this is different. Six. So because this inner diameter is 25, you have this spacer. This reduces the diameter from 25 to 24. The new bearing that we get has a 24 millimeter inner diameter. So we don't use a dust cover that has that little spacer. Also, this bearing is seven millimeters wide. So that's why you can see the little gap there. Or not the gap, but the, you know, this ridge drops down a little bit. So this bearing, when it comes out, it has this little dust seal. And when you measure that, the total width is six and a half millimeters.
All right, so a bit of an update. I started making this video before I received my seals in the mail, so I was wrong about this. They fit the old style perfect. They don't fit the new style great. I got this gap and there's not much I can do about that. They don't offer a seal that extends all the way to the edge of this cup. So that's what it's gonna be, it looks like. And the other thing that's concerning, I didn't order spacers. I should have. This doesn't stick out. I mean, if you press down, it does not stick out over the face of this. And I just did a test fit and I have 13 thousandths of an inch from the crank arm rubbing on the edge of the cup. And I just got lucky. I didn't even realize this was constructed like this, but this has this little uh, bump out here that saved me and allowed this to work. So we are good. All right, we're going to do some shopping. So you can just get the whole bottom bracket if you want. BSA 24 millimeter Shimano, this should work. I would bet that it would. Um, but this is kind of where I, or my reasoning behind this was 117 bucks versus 16 bucks for two bearings. Um, so this is the size that I got, 2437s, 24 inner, 37 outer, seven millimeter wide. I got these for the mountain bike because they allegedly have better sealing. And these are ceramic for the road bike. So that's what I went with you can optionally get the 6805. So this is what comes out of the stock cups, uh, sort of. The stock ones are six millimeters and have that open side with the external removable seal. Uh, this is just a standard sealed bearing. If you do go this route, you will have to use, uh, reuse the stock dust cover with the inner flange to reduce the inner size to from uh, 25 to 24. If you go this route, you will need a different dust cover. So that's this. So this seals off the bearing a little bit better. They're already sealed, but you know, this adds, I guess, but uh, it also acts as a spacer. So if you remember from earlier in the video, the cups that are rebuilt, the inner race of the bearing is below the cup or uh, inside of the cup. And the crank arms ultimately have to ride on the inner race of the bearing, so you have to space that out so the crank arms aren't riding on the cup. So this should help with that. I would also recommend ordering some of these, the spindle spacers. They come in one millimeter or half millimeter. And if this dust cover isn't enough to um, make sure that your crank arms don't ride on the cup, you will need to add these and I recommend just getting them so you don't have to place another order and pay for shipping if you already, you know, put together an order that gets you free shipping. So grab a couple of these as well. All right, so basically cups just come off. bunch of grease okay so this dust seal actually rides um, inside of the inner race of the bearing the next thing we're gonna take off is uh, there's a seal here you can kind of grab it with your fingers. And just pulls right off. There's your bearing. So now's a good time to talk about all the options we have for removing the bearing. I purchased this prior to the project uh, thinking it was gonna work and it didn't. It seems good quality and it's inexpensive. It just didn't work for this application. And uh, I normally don't go the off-brand route, but it was just so much more expensive to get something from Enduro or another major uh, retailer. And I think it's gonna work for other bearing pressing and pulling things that I do in my life, but just not for this. So the plan was to get this little guy behind the bearing, like in this picture, and to pull it out, but there's just way too small of a gap between the back of the bearing and the cup. It just couldn't expand. This width was just a hair too big and it didn't work but it worked good for pressing, which you'll see later in the video. To do it right, you get one of these. 
It comes in uh, 6805 and 2437, but you got to buy each of them. Uh, and then it keeps the bearing totally perpendicular to what it was in the entire time it's being extracted, which is better for the cup in this case. So I decided to just get a punch and hit the edges of the bearing or hit the edges or hit the inner race and punch it out the old fashioned way, which isn't great because the angle or the bearing angles as it comes out, but it works. So I gave it a couple of pretty good wax when the cup was at room temperature and it did not work well at all. So aluminum, when you heat it up, it just expands a lot more than steel. So heating this up made the bearing very easy to punch out. Uh, I used a hammer and a, and a nice punch, but you could probably honestly just use a screwdriver. So yeah, just give it a couple of minutes. It's gonna be hot to the touch, so I got a welding glove, um, but it's gonna pop right out. I got this chisel. You can just get the edge of the chisel on the inner ace of the bearing, and the old gappy out there, and give it a hit. So you can already see there that it's starting to come out. A couple things here, just work the bearing back and forth, hit one side and then hit it 180 degrees to the opposite side. The other thing is, yeah, I have a heat gun. You don't need it. You can just put this in the oven. I would imagine it's at 250 about. I mean, it was hot to the touch, but it wasn't like an instant burn, so it wasn't crazy hot. And at this point, it's going to come out so easy that you can just hold it free floating in midair. And we're out. Alright, so we have our new bearings here MR2437 LLU. LLU is a seal type. Uh, this side of the bearing has LLB seals. You might also see RS. You can look up what all those different seal types mean if you choose. So uh, we're going to take a little bit of assembly grease and just coat the outside of it. Uh, the theory here being that if you reuse your cups several times, having a lubed uh, surface when you install them and take them out might help prolong the life of your cups a little bit is in here and the bearing and basically you just squeeze it all together and this is the 24 to 37 uh, which matches the size of a bearing Snug. Easy. Uh, we can do one more just for fun. These are my road cups. Uh, I did try to heat up the cups with the heat gun and freeze the bearings. You can see videos of people online doing that, but usually they use dry ice. Uh, I couldn't get it to work. I don't think the heat gun heats the bearings up that much. Maybe if you put them in the oven and heated them up to like 400, it might work. And use dry ice, you could, but that becomes more of a hassle than buying an expensive bearing uh, press. So, you know, um, you gotta buy some tools, but it's still, after your first time, you kind of break even to what a premium bottom bracket would cost. And now I got a bottom bracket with premium bearings, so you don't even need the uh, adjustable wrench either so we're in and that's that we have our road bracket done and our mountain bracket get nicer ceramic bearings there and uh, a little better ceiling bearings for the mountain bike to keep the crud out 
So considerably cheaper than buying two premium bottom brackets and really not that much time. Um, there was some cost in tools. And even as far as this goes, you don't need it. You could heat these up and you could get a socket and you could pound these in. Um, you run the risk of putting them in at an angle and it's a little harder. You know, you saw how easy it was with the press. All right, so that's about it. I just got to get my dust covers and put these in the bike. I'm not going to do that in this video. There are plenty of other videos on the internet of uh, installing these. And hopefully you had fun going against orders and disassembling these. And if you do choose to tackle these yourself, I uh, hope the video helped. All right. Thanks for watching.